Hunter bring another action figure review. Today we're looking at the Extreme Sets pop-up diorama, the building 3.0. Now I've gotten the building 1.0 and 2.0. I was pretty excited to find out they're making a 3.0 and 4.0 to add more variety to the buildings in my city diorama setup. Now I'd highly recommend watch the tutorial as you put this thing together. Frankly it's kind of a pain in the ass, especially the roof getting together right. If you do it wrong you could ruin the set and make it a lot less stable and look a lot worse than it possibly could. So let's go ahead and check out how we got to this point. So I did go ahead and get two of the building 3.0 dioramas to add to my large action figure city. You can see here they are in their cardboard sleeves. Completely blank, really nothing to tell you what's inside of here. Except there's one little label here, it simply says Building 3.0 112 scale pop up diorama. And then, as you can see here, once you've taken the cardboard sleeve off the outer part of the box, you can actually kind of see Building 3.0 pop up. Kind of got a little building here, a little bit of clear plastic so you can see through and kind of see what the actual building is going to look like. Backside here, simply sort of advertising Extreme Sets, extremesets.com. So, let's check them out. Now that we've got it out of the package, here are all the contents laid out. Now I must say, when I built the building 1.0 and 2.0, I used the tutorial that Extreme Sets put onto YouTube. I was a little bit concerned when I didn't find a tutorial for this. But if you use the tutorial for building 2.0, it'll get you through what you need to do for here. So I notice it comes with several little air conditioners that you assembled. We've got a Velcro piece here, kind of new for extreme sets, at least from my experience. This is going to be like a garage door that'll attach to part of the building here. You can see on the back side, got the Velcro pieces, looking pretty cool. So we got four different pieces of the building. One, two, looks like a window piece has been punched out. Three, some functioning doors perhaps. And then four, these will go together to build the perimeter of the building. In addition to that, we've got part of the rooftop here. Another part of the rooftop here. And then what I believe is sort of concrete to make sort of a loading dock or whatnot. Now the first thing I plan to do is assemble these small air conditioner units. Now if you're familiar with extreme sets at all, make sure that you fold each crease as much as you can before putting it together. It will just make it easier in the long run. And as you can see, we've got these four air conditioning units, 3D. Make sure you follow the tutorial if you've not built one of these before. And if you, even if you have, I would suggest to use the tutorial as well. You can definitely mess this up if you don't fold or crease the things the right way or prep it properly. Next, I would suggest to build this sort of concrete item here, part of a loading dock or whatever it's supposed to be. Once again, take it, fold all the pieces. Fold it the opposite way. These are separated pieces and are actually part of the building. That's why I'm getting these out of the way first. And once you start putting this thing together, it's pretty obvious how it goes. Once you're done, you've got this pretty stable feeling area for your figures to stand on, etc., etc. Next, take these two rooftop pieces and just get them out of the way for now. Deal with that part last. So next, take these four different building pieces. Obviously, you're going to assemble the building at this point. Just make sure you watch the top and the bottom and make sure you get them 
with the right side and the bottom. Obviously the doorways are on the bottom so you know what the bottom part's gonna look like. Match up all four of those with this. Then start putting them together. Before you put it together, make sure you crease each side. It will help quite a bit in the long run. Crease it as much as you possibly can, as well as all the little tabs on the other side. This will definitely help you when putting it together. Do be careful when putting it together. This is cardboard. Once you ruin it, it's not salvageable very easily. So next, assemble all the wall panels together and let's see where we're at. And now that I've encountered this piece with a big hole in the center for the garage door, let's flip it around. You can see the cardboard here. Here's the actual piece. It does have a top and bottom. As you can see the number here, so make sure you do it the right way. And then connect it like so. Now I'm kind of feeling like this piece is going to be the front of my building. Just big, huge metal door open here. So to attach the pieces together, take one side here. This I actually think I'm going to use for the back side. So I'm going to use a neutral piece for the side. You take these flaps here, so fold it in. The flaps will fit inside of the grooves. Just be very careful that you don't mess it up. Ease them in there. Once you get the entire thing put together, shut as firmly as you possibly can, then stand upright and repeat as needed till you have all four sides done. And then as you can see here, we've got all four sides of the building diorama attached with no roof. This thing's pretty stable so far and looking pretty good. Now we've got these last two pieces. This is going to be the center of the rooftop. Take all these flaps, fold them upright like so, as well as these back. And what you're eventually going to be making is the rooftop in the center of there like so. And this guy here, you'll want to fold it as well along where the pre-existing creases are. Do not make your own or it will mess it up. You want to fold it pretty much like I did here. This part in, this part in, and this part in as well. These tabs here, go ahead and just do this with them for now. sides done to prep putting this thing together this thing is the hardest part a little bit of pain in the ass so just make sure you do it carefully and do it right and you're still not quite ready to put the inside of the rooftop into the outer part now this here flip upside down it's got these tabs here if you do this right and it's kind of a pain all the, these tabs will go outward like so fold it in all the way. It does have some risen area that here that will help lock it into place with the cardboard. So fold it across tight. Actually, see this is where it gets difficult. This tab here will have to go inside of here while you fold this on top. And then this tab here has to go under where this one's gonna fold over. So you gotta kinda do all the parts at the same time. It can be frustrating, just bear with it. Notice it kinda locks into place there. As I put all four sides down, it should support it pretty nicely. There are two parts that don't have tabs. Do the far two sides with the tabs first, and then these will fold over, secure it into place. 
Once you get it secured into place, this is what it should look like. It should stay pretty stable, all these parts in there. Just make sure you tuck it all the way in so it can support itself. All these different little grooves. And so next, the pieces you will not be able to see, this entire thing will end up getting covered up. The pegs here will go inside. On this piece here, you will see the entire brick piece. So my best suggestion would be to fold it downward and you'll find which two pieces fold with no problem and the other two go on top. This one here is a little bit more difficult to get over. So if you can get it set up, kind of like so, slip it underneath. Make sure these brick parts go inside the roof. Now it's not going to fork out yet, but this is just heading the right direction. Kind of a start like so. And then your next goal is going to be take these brick tabs here, slide them underneath. And this is difficult. It's going to be fighting you along. Every time you get a little bit more done, it's going to be a little easier. These guys here go inside of here like so. Then this tab here needs to go into here. Like I said, it's going to fight you. Just be gentle. Don't mess it up. Notice the tab going inside of there. Get it all the way in there. Then this tab should fit in there. Like I said, it's going to fight you. And that one went in no problem. I'll have to mess with this one a little bit. And then once you've gotten all the tabs in, it should look like so. And be pretty sturdy here. Now just be careful with it. Don't force anything. It should all fit into place as it's meant to be. If you force it, you could split the cardboard, etc., etc. So now we've got the rooftop here, which will fit right on top of the rest of the building, and then we're pretty much done. And now that we have attached the roof, here is the building 3.0 pop up diorama completed. Next, let's check out some of the action features this thing has. As you saw earlier, there are four of these removable air conditioner units. Now I bought two of these buildings. This one here came out with this window punched out. Did not come with the window in the box at all. The other set came with a different piece punched out. I find that kind of odd. If you were to look at the other sides, there's a piece down here that I could punch out. The cardboard is sort of perforated. And replace it with an air conditioner. I'm not gonna punch that out because I think it won't stand very stable once I've done that. I prefer to look the way it is now. There's also a third spot above here where you could punch out the cardboard again and put an air conditioner. So as far as I can tell, there are three places you can utilize the four air conditioner units they gave you. Now in addition to that, there are opening doors and I really don't want to overuse them. So here's one on the side of the building. Yes, you bend it, it will open. Like I said, I'm trying to sort of just keep it kind of nice. Apparently this side is not open. So next we have the front door here, same kind of deal. It does open both sides. I do imagine this thing will be sitting in my action figure room. It will be on the carpet so that will keep the doors in place. I really don't want to get them loosey-goosey and bent up too much. So another action feature, we've got the garage door over here. Now you saw me attach this earlier and this thing is now portrayed as the garage down. But I do believe it gives you another option as well. And then you can also display it with the garage up, which is pretty cool. You can still see part of the garage door, the way it attaches on the inside. So it's not like you just take it off, but it's actually up in its upward position. Pretty cool, you could have Batman coming in on a bunch of choppers. Here's a biker gang inside of there. I'm surprised to see him. Could make sure some cool displays. It also comes with this separate piece. This is called a loading dock on their website. 
but to me, not really sure how the trucks are supposed to get up there. It feels like it should have some kind of ramp going up there. It's a solid piece, sort of concrete looking, rectangle, fits exactly the same height as the bottom part of the building here, and gets access up to the garage door, so pretty cool. But me personally, I'll be keeping mine in the downward position probably 95% of the time. And even though I bought mine to display as a square-shaped building, fully assembled, you can disassemble it and make it look like a whole bunch of different buildings in a row, or just a wall background for your city setup. A lot of different options for this thing. So next let's take a slightly better look at the rooftop here. This thing's pretty sturdy. You can see in here the detail. It's not too much, not too little. I'd say it's just right. I'd say it feels a little more sturdy than some of the previous releases I have. They're kind of starting to cave in a little bit. You could always put something inside the building. It is hollow to support it. I personally got a couple of milk crates and I figured I could put them inside of here and then put something on top of the milk crates and eventually get the level with the bottom of this. That way you put as much weight on here and it'll be great over time. And as I mentioned earlier, I did get two of these buildings. As you can see, this one here has the air conditioning unit, was pre-punched out, was there. And then this one was on the side here, pre-punched out. Did kind of find them annoying that it didn't include that piece of cardboard, so you can kind of put it back in there. And found it odd that both ones had different pieces punched out. And then with two of these next to each other, you sure do have a big roof surface area to play and display on. So next let's check out the height of this thing, the dimensions, how tall, wide, and deep it is. And then we'll check it out compared to various action figure lines to see how they fit in with it. And then we'll check it out compared to several other 1 12th scale dioramas. So this thing here is quite tall, massive. If you look at the height, it's 24 inches tall, 2 feet tall. It's almost four times the size of a typical action figure. If you want to see how wide it is, it looks like sitting right about 19 inches wide. And this thing is a perfect square, so it should also be 19 inches deep. And it sure is. Pretty massive building for your action figures. Well, I ended up having to switch tables for a little bit more room for these comparison shots. Now, before we check this thing out with actual action figures, let's look at a couple of interesting ways you can display this. So as you can see, here is a building by itself with a loading dock on the side. You could have two buildings next to each other, near each other, both of them with the loading docks attached, kind of making an alleyway between these two sets. You could also butt these buildings up against each other, creating a very large rooftop surface to play on, as well as kind of making it look like a much wider, longer building. They do blend in well together, the way that they're designed, but they have this unfortunate gap between the two due to the way the rooftops are designed. And then you can have the building by itself, or you can enhance it with other action figure diorama pieces. One example can be these Diamond Select Toys Gotham Sidewalk or Road pieces. These came with the Diamond Select Gotham figures, the Toys R Us more basic edition that only cost $10 instead of the $25 the deluxe versions would cost. Instead of the large diorama city piece, they came with just a sidewalk base like this but they can be hooked together with the other ones like so. I personally have 60 or 70 of these things. If anybody happens to have some of these that they don't care to keep, message me and I'd be willing to pay for them. And if you get a few of them and put them together, they can make a pretty cool sidewalk extending off the side of your building. And then of course, knowing me, I got enough of these things that I can go around all four corners of the building. Looking pretty cool. Definitely enhances this and gives your figures a place to stand on, etc. And then here are the two buildings put together with sidewalk pieces completely alongside. And then here are the two buildings with a whole bunch of Gotham sidewalk and road pieces connected, making a large 
road, street side, or alleyway between the two buildings. And then here they are next to a bunch of larger action figures in my collection. These are pretty much all 7 inch scale figures. These are from Diamond Select Toys, McFarlane Toys, NECA Toys, as well as DC Direct and DC Collectibles. Your largest figures in the 112th scale will fit in here, 7 inches tall, looking great. And then as you can see, these larger figures fit up lovely on the rooftop as well. And then here are the buildings next to a bunch of medium scale, the 6 and 7 inch figures. These are Mattel Multiverse, DC Universe Classics, Mezco figures, as well as Mafex figures. Scale up nicely with these huge towering buildings. And then as you can see, here's what a couple of Batmans would look like on the left. And then here's a Thief Mania's getaway on the rooftop on the right. And here they are next to a bunch of figures on the smaller end of the 6 and 7 inch scale. These here are Jazzwares figures, Figure Arts figures, Mattel Movie Masters, Hasbro Marvel Legends, kind of the smaller size. And the diorama sure does fit in with any 6 or 7 inch action figure, no problem at all. And as you can see, even the smaller figures can utilize the rooftop just fine. And this rooftop is a great spot for GCP headquarters, the Bat Signal, Gordon, with the smaller scale figures. As well, it can do the same thing with the larger scale figures. This building just has so many different uses and functionality in the action figure world. And then of course this set was going to work great with a sniper looking over the rooftops of Gotham for his target. Or perhaps one of Gotham's many anti-heroes doing his thing. And then here's the rooftop with some Mattel, Batman, Rebirth family characters. Should work good for Batman encountering Catwoman, not allowing her to escape with the stolen merchandise. Next, let's check out this building compared to a bunch of other 112th scale action figure dioramas, starting with the other extreme sets pop-ups. And then here is this building 3.0 compared with the extreme sets building 1.0. And then here are the differences in the rooftop with the building 3.0 compared to 1.0. And then of course I did get two of the building 1.0 to be used in my action figure city. Notice the dimensions are pretty much identical with the building 3.0 as far as height, width, and depth. And then here are these two buildings back to back with each other in my action figure city. And then here is the building 3.0 next to the building 2.0. This one is a lot smaller, shorter, does have a nice sort of overpass or awning on top of the strip there. And then here are the differences in the rooftop 3.0 and 2.0 buildings. And then yes, I did also get two of the building 2.0 for my action figure city. And then here are these two buildings as they are in my action figure city. And then here's the building 3.0 next to the other building 3.0 that I purchased. And then here's the building 3.0 next to the building 4.0. The building 4.0 is the tallest building that Extreme Sets has made. But of course it is actually two separate buildings stacked on top of each other. So it doesn't have to be displayed this way. And then here are the differences on the roof of the building 3.0 and 4.0. The 4.0 is the only building they've made where the roof doesn't actually dip inward, it's completely flat. And then of course I did get two of the building 4.0 as well. I know, I know, big shocker. But as you can see, here are two of them next to the 3.0. And then here's this diorama next to the Diamond Select Toys Ghostbusters Series 1 through 5 Collecting Connect rooftop diorama. This thing is an amazing diorama for 112 scale figures. And then of course I did also get two of these to display on top of my bookshelves in my action figure city. And then here are these guys as they are set up in my action figure city.
And then here it is next to the Diamond Select Toys Collecting Connect Ghostbusters Firehouse Front Diorama. This came with Series 6 through 10 of the Ghostbusters figures. And then here's this Firehouse Front as it is displayed in my action figure City. It has another building on top of it. And then here it is next to the NECA San Diego Comic Con exclusive 2018 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Street Scene Diorama. This is arguably one of the best 112 scale dioramas out there. And if you don't like this color, there is another option for you. And then of course I did buy two of these street scene dioramas to fit into my action figure city. These two street scene dioramas make an absolutely fantastic building if you take the cardboard backdrop away and butt them up against each other. And then here it is next to the re-release of the NECA street scene diorama. This one was not under the banner of Ninja Turtles, just a generic diorama for any of your action figure lines you want to put it with. And then of course I did get two of these as well with the intent to be utilized the same way as the Ninja Turtle version of the diorama. And NECA just makes an absolutely awesome building if you butt these up against each other. It has all four sides, detail, 3D, roof, base, windows, everything you possibly ask for in a building. And then here are all the NECA sets put together as two separate buildings in my action figure city. And then here's the building next to an old Kenner Ghostbusters Firehouse playset. Now this is not a 112 scale playset. These were for 5 inch basic figures way back in the early 90s. But it is a building and it has a great place in my action figure city. Can't fit figures inside of it, but sure can put them on top or beside it. And then I do have two of these as well. I did buy one on eBay 10 plus years ago. And then eventually I found the one from my childhood in my parents' attic as well. And I do display mine in my city this way, but up against each other with the sides facing out, the only complete intact side that's a wall, a bunch of Gotham sidewalk pieces below it, kind of just making the side of a building that your figures can walk, be walking by and whatnot. And then here are these two sets as they are in my action figure city. And then here it is next to a Budweiser advertisement display I got from the grocery store many years ago. I had to take them off the table and put them on the floor because on the table this thing was taller than the ceiling. Pretty cool playset or diorama from Action Figure World and it was free. And then here is this thing as it sits in my Action Figure City. Very, very tall, very tall indeed. Here they are next to three different Lori playsets. These are more so kind of like dollhouses. These are available at Target in the United States. They're pretty cool. The size is definitely right. One of them has numerous levels and a rooftop. They all have light up features, but the two on the edges could sure benefit from a repaint would make them look a whole lot more realistic. And then here's this building next to a Mattel Wrestling Create a Superstar playset. This is a customizable playset. I actually got three of these things and sort of put them together. Kind of use it as sort of an unfinished building, skyscraper type thing in my action figure city. As you can see here, this thing is rather tall. I do kind of regret not getting another couple levels of it. They were pretty cheap back in the day. And then here it is next to a 112 scale Ninja Turtle playset. This is a sewer playset. Kind of folds up. Kind of looks like a castle here. And then it folds out to have a pretty cool sewer layer. And then of course I did get two of these as well. And then of course this playset does open up, fold out, and become pretty big as well. Has a ton of uses in my action figure world. And then here it is next to the Van Helsing Castle playset. I don't believe this is actually for 112 scale figures, but it's large enough that it works pretty good for that purpose. 
And then here it is next to the He-Man Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull. This was a Matty Collector exclusive back in the day. Absolutely massive, huge playset. I personally use this as part of my Ra's al Ghul base. And then here it is next to the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series Batcave Diorama. This Batcave obviously will not enhance your city dioramas, but it is a great 112th scale diorama. And then just because I had all these buildings out for this review, I took them all to a separate room. Here they are in our reading room in front of my comics. Pretty impressive, the overall scale and scheme of these things. Endless city strip. Although I don't actually know where these buildings are going to end up in my action figure city setup. Here they are replacing the building 1.0 and 2.0. I think I'm going to have to rearrange my entire action figure room just to make these fit in. So all in all, I'm going to have to say I'm very pleased with this purchase. This building is far superior to the 1.0 and 2.0 as far as quality control goes. It's a lot more stable. I have a feeling it's going to have better longevity. Fits in great in my action figure world and fits in great with my action figures. If I were to rate this thing, I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. This thing is great for what it is. Yeah, I wish it was plastic, but that would be quite a bit more expensive. I think it's great to enhance my action figure world, and it's going to look great for a regular city setup with some regular city characters, whether it be my Batman world or any other action figure universes I decide to portray. So this is D Hunter. If you like this video, press like below. If you have anything we want to say about the video, add it in the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys real soon.